Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Today's show will feature the Boxing Day fixtures on Thursday. Joining me shortly will be our UK correspondent, Stevie Brahm, where we will go through the Premiership and Championship fixtures, obviously, for Thursday. Give our thoughts, our tips, and our bets after each particular game. We kick off as normal with our last one standing competition. Going into week eight, we had four people left. Unfortunately for Dylan Horn and Emerson Berathea, they picked the wrong time to use a David Decay blunder, which saw them eliminated with Man United. Paddy Loker was on Bournemouth, and they were terrible too when they lost 1-0 at Bournemouth. And Guillaume Nell from BRT in Durban. He selected Wolves, and they were lucky to beat Norwich City. So Guillaume Nell, who is a Chelsea supporter, will be making our arrangements today to find out what game and when he's going to go to join us on our UK trip as our overseas winner. Our next onside soccer competition will start at the 1st of February. So there's plenty of time to get organized in Jan January, get the uniforms and so on paid for. So the 1st of February, we will start. We now cross over to our UK correspondent in London, Stevie Brom. Good morning, Steve. Are you there? Steve, good morning. Good morning, Butch. How's it going? How's the weather there? Uh, I'd say slightly warmer. It's probably uh, going to be about 10 degrees today if we're lucky. So, you know, almost a heat wave. OK. You never ran into Paul yesterday? No, I should, I should imagine it's like a bear with a sore head, head after that performance. Yeah, he was sending everybody photos of uh, outside the new White Hart Lane Stadium. I wonder if yeah. he deleted the photos after half time. But uh, well, anyway. yeah, it was uh, you know, look, it was one of those games. I mean, you know, beforehand we thought that the way Tottenham had been playing and with Chelsea's recent form, that you know, you think Tottenham were going to win that. But from literally the first minute, Chelsea were at it. Played, I thought they were. It was a superb performance. Yeah. I mean, they you know they just caressed the ball and uh, you know. I thought Mason Mount uh, was exceptional, um, yeah. and William up front. I mean, they just, you know, they ran the game. It was a very, very, very good performance. Steve, there's talk about Chelsea being in the market for Jordan Sancho. Can you yeah, see I him going? That. I mean, I think a lot of clubs are going to be interested, although uh, the price keeps going up. I mean, yeah. the latest I heard was something like 120 million, which is sort of crazy. Uh, you know, look, if 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 uh, definitely, I mean, look, he's, he's a hot young property. Um, you know, I think United were, were looking at him. Whether City have got, I, I did read at one point. I thought City had first refusal to get him back, but whether that's true or not, you know, it depends whether Abramovich is prepared to make that money available so they can have a marquee signing. Um, you know, but it's you know, 120 million. It's you know, that's starting to get a little bit crazy. But you know, he's a great player, and and, and he probably would fit in with with the other young players at Chelsea, would make them even more exciting. Yeah, and I wouldn't pay 120 million for him. Talking about 120 million, Paul Pogba came on to help Man United, try and help Man United. I just couldn't believe what David De Gea did for the first goal. No, well, I'm sure he'll look back at back at that uh, with embarrassment because you know nine times out of ten or, or or more, you know, he would have just plucked that ball out of the air, and and I think you know it had an effect because uh, I think they just lost concentration for a few minutes. Van Bissaka gave a careless penalty away. Harry Maguire was coming across, probably could have stuffed out the, the problem. And at 2-0, you know, although United huffed and puffed and probably didn't get a, a, the luck they needed, yeah. it looked like game over. And, you know, I guess the only um, bright bit on the horizon for them was that Paul Pogba came back uh, after being out for so long. But uh, it, was, it was a very disappointing performance from United. It, they seemed to just be going through the motions in the first half. Um, and Nigel Pearson does what Nigel Pearson does with his teams. He got yeah. them working hard. You know they were they were fairly aggressive. They, you know they want, they just seemed they wanted to win it more. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they they had that little bit of luck they needed. United couldn't quite sort of find the target when they did. Ben Foster was on form, and uh, as a result, that gets them up sort of not off the bottom, but certainly level with Norwich. Yeah. Yeah, now with Troy Deeney, I think if Troy Deeney had played up front for Man United, they would have won. You know, I look at United, and if ever there's a position we need strengthening, it's a number nine spot. You know, Martial's not a target man. No, I mean, too, too often, I mean, they found themselves in play like Rashford found himself. You know, he likes, you know, out on the wing and likes to cut in, but they just didn't really create enough. You know, Lingard had, a, had an opportunity. Yeah. You know, 
to me, they, they, they look more dangerous when they bring on Mason Greenwood. And you're thinking it won't be long before they're going to start with him because at least he knows where the goal is and he, you know, he, he tries to have a go. But yeah. uh, I think they need to bounce back. I think that, uh, that was a disappointing result for them. Yeah, you're right. Steve, uh, Arsenal, you know, watching the Arsenal-Everton game, it uh, looked a little bit more solid. Now, reading uh, the papers yesterday, there's trouble with Mesut Ozil. Apparently, he passed comment about the Chinese regime. Is that right? Yes, he did. He did that just before the uh, Manchester City game. Okay. And um, what actually happened, so, you know, look, he, he made on his own social media, you know, wasn't, he wasn't representing Arsenal, but because okay. he is obviously a well-known Arsenal player, the Chinese government got very upset. And actually, that match was meant, the Arsenal Man City game was meant to be being shown live in China, and they, they cancelled it. They just showed uh, um, a rerun of the Wolves-Tottenham game. Um, Arsenal came out with a statement to say that they're an apolitical uh, football club, they have no political or religious you know, ties, and as such, um, you know, these were Mesut Ozil's own personal views, but nothing to do with the club. Yeah. You know, whether they, they felt they had to do that, or maybe you know, being a little bit cynical, they actually have quite a lot of um, commercial ties with, uh, in China, um, obviously trying to get the brand across. So, you know, they wanted to be seen to be distancing themselves. Having said that, he seems to have fallen out with the club again, Ozil, um, when he was substituted, if you probably noticed, against, yeah, Man, against City, Man City. Yeah. Bottle, and Lundberg came out and said um, on Saturday morning, or sort of after the game against Everton, had he not have been injured, he would have dropped him anyway. So having fallen out with Emery, you know, it looked like he was back in the fold with Lundberg. And now it makes you wonder if, um, you know, he's blotted his copybook again, Ozil, and, you know, we're not going to be seeing much of him under Arteta. Yeah, if I was Arsenal, I would look to move him on, move him to Turkey. There seems to be rumours well, every day about is, that. He might go to Turkey. Um, you know, maybe he's, I don't, I'm not sure he's that comfortable here at the moment. Obviously, you may remember a few months ago there was that, uh, you know, terrible situation no, where London Bridge, yeah. someone tried to hijack his car. Okay. Uh, his wife's not happy here. So, you know, it might be that he... You know, he's not overly happy here in, in London at the moment, so you know, that might, might be best all round for the club and him. Yeah. Steve, on to Aston Villa. I see John McGinn got injured. He's one of their creative players alongside yeah, Grealish. Is, but that's the bad miss. He's been diagnosed yesterday with a fractured ankle. Oh. So um, the, di look, the prognosis is, looks like he will be out for at least three months. So you're not going to be seeing him probably till about uh, Easter time. And I think that's a real blow because certainly last year and the beginning of this year, I mean, he, he alongside Greenish are the driving force in the middle. Yeah. I think he'll be a, a big loss. And you know, they had a really poor poor defeat, uh, I hope, to Southampton. Um, and I, I, it's interesting because they spent a lot of money um, in, the, in the summer and they were being compared to Fulham. And, and, and yes. they said, no, look, we've done it differently. Well, when you look at some of the players they bought, like Wesley, you know, spent a lot of money, you know, he can't score goals. And this yeah. is their problem. They haven't got an out-and-out -out goal scorer. So when you look, compare that to Southampton, who haven't been playing well, but they've got Danny Ings, who scored seven in the last seven. And I yes. think that if Southampton are going to stay up, it's because they do have somebody who, you know, has an eye for goal. And I think that was, that, without doubt, that was the difference on Saturday. No, you're right. If you don't score, you obviously can't win. Well, last but definitely not uh, least in our show topics, Liverpool won the World Club Championship. We never had it, had it on you. Were they comfortable? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, as the game wore on, they, they were more and more comfortable. Probably could have won it in uh, normal time. Certainly in extra time, they were by far the strongest team. Scored a good goal. And then, well, we're under no real pressure, although they created one chance uh, not long before the end, uh, Flamenco. But Liverpool were worthy winners. Mm. You know, they, 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 they put out their strongest available team and, and, and deserved to win. And I understand that something like uh, 13 of the, or 14 of the last 16 times the winners of the Champions League have, have beaten the, the winners of the Copa Libertadores. So I think it does show that, you know, although they've got the skill, yeah. you know, the, the, the European clubs have got, they've got the stronger squads. Yeah, I think if you have a look at the Brazilian national team, I think they all play in Europe. There's not many of them yeah, that uh, I, I play in Brazil. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that's the difference. And in fact, uh, Flamenco, a number of their players, are players who have previously played. Yes. Uh, they had Felipe Luiz, who was at Chelsea. Uh, you know, there's a number of players there who have played in, in Europe that have gone back to South America. But it was a good game. It was, you know, I think it was certainly the, by far the best game of the tournament. And uh, Liverpool just uh, sort of stepped up a gear after their game against Monterey. Yeah, good luck to them.
Yeah, they are the best team in Europe now. They're the best team in the world so far. Well, <laughs> Everybody that doesn't the support one... Liverpool, they're going to have to suck it up for a while. Well, I think, I think it's the one title they've never won. I yes. mean, they, they've lost uh, three times before in, in that final over many years. So, you know, I think they'd be uh, pleased to do it. And actually, you know, right, they've got one game to fit in now. I mean, they're out of the, the mm-hmm. EFL Cup, as we know. So, mm-hmm. actually, they don't have those two semi-final games in January. So... You know, it gives them an opportunity now to uh, sort of you know, save a little bit of time. So actually, you know, because I think they were concerned about all their fixtures, you know, I think that that will probably help them out a bit. Yeah, you know, when you think about it, they've got a squad of 25, maybe 20 that really can play. It's only Van Dijk, really, and the goalkeeper that are all really permanent fixtures. The rest you can mix and match, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I think the one thing was um, Alex Ox- Oxlade-Chamberlain was seen... Um, leaving the team hotel on crutches. Uh, Klopp said it doesn't look serious, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, walking along crutches, you wouldn't expect him to be available to play on uh, Thursday. But otherwise, I think they all came out unscathed and, you know, I think they're ready for the uh, some big games coming up. Yeah, I think so. Nice uh, 10 day break in the heat as opposed to the. Yeah, well, I, I think, as they said, um, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of clubs love to try, if they had the time, we'll go out this time of year for some warm yeah. weather training. So they've had that opportunity of doing that. So uh, I think winning the, the competition, you know, training in, in, in sunshine, I'm sure they come back, uh, you know, quite, quite refreshed by it all. Yeah, I agree. Steve, on to Thursday's Boxing Day fixtures. We start with Tottenham at home to Brighton. Can you see Tottenham rebounding? Well, you'd think that uh, you know, they, you'd expect a reaction because it was a poor performance. And yeah. obviously they're going to be without, without uh, Son now for three games. Yeah. You know, it's a sort of petulant kick out at Rudiger. Um, you know, he looks sort of devastated getting sent off, but... He just can't do that, yeah. you know, especially with VAR. I mean, it was uh, once they looked at it, and you could see that you know he, he sort of made that action to kick out at him. Um, he was gone, and you know it was game over. I, I think Tottenham will bounce back. I, I just think that uh, I don't think Mourinho would would accept another performance like that. Yeah. Um, they just they all had an off day. You know, even Harry Kane when he did get a stiffer goal, you know, just couldn't get anywhere near it. So I, I think they will. I think it'll be a close game. Um, I'm not sure what he, who he's going to bring in. I mean, he brought Ericsson on the second half. He, he seems reluctant to want to, to start Ericsson, yeah. but um, maybe he will with Son, Son off. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, Brighton are, are playing some nice football, but I just think that Tottenham might just, might just edge that. Yeah, I just think he's got to change the midfield. You know, he can't play Eric Dyer in the midfield. He's a centre-half. You know, they've got to play Undon Biller. I think they spend 60 or 70 million pounds for him. Yeah, and I, I, I wonder if he'll do that. He took Dyer off, and yeah. I, I, that, that wouldn't surprise me that that will be one of the, the changes. He will certainly make changes. Yeah. I think he needs to. You yeah. can't. I don't think that performance, you know, irrespective of how well Chelsea played, that performance was not acceptable. Yeah, and I think you'll start Danny Rose. Vertonghen offers nothing. You know, he's maybe not a bad defender, but going forward, you know, that forward line needs supply. And yesterday, I know Chelsea outclassed them, outsmarted them, whatever we say, but... When Spurs on the ball, Ori is a passenger. He doesn't know how to use the ball. And the other side, Vatonga, doesn't cross the halfway line. Well, Aurier, I mean, Aurier cost them the, uh, the, the first goal. Yeah. I mean, he was a fault. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a very careless header back that uh, led to the corner. And then he, was, he wasn't even really looking when they took the corner. And by the yes. time he came out, uh, William just showed him, uh, you know, sent him, one, sent him the wrong way with the step over and gave him the space to curl it into the bottom corner. I thought he, he was shown up there. And I've, you know, I think if Mourinho looks at that, uh, I'd be amazed if he doesn't think about sort of uh, change, changing his, his right back. Yeah. Well, Aston, the second game is Aston Villa against Norwich. Of what I saw with Aston Villa on Saturday, as you mentioned early, I can't have them, Steve. And I like Norwich. You know, I watched them play against Wolves and they were unlucky. They should have been three or four and up. And uh, well, two mistakes. This, I think yeah, Norwich no, can upset them here. Well, I think I think Norwich's problem, unfortunately, is that they they concede too many goals. Um, we you know we knew at the start of the season the defence was not strong enough. Yeah. That they will score goals, and they were desperately unlucky. And they'll look back at that game and think you know they should have been two or three up easily at half time. But uh, Wolves got back in the game and you know did what they do well. You know they they have got players who can who can hit the back of the net. I think that'll be a, I think it'll be a close game. I, I think Norwich might hold them. Yeah. Um, if they win, I think it would be a great result for them. You know? But I, I, feel, I, I still feel for Villa at the moment because obviously losing McGinn, um, you're not quite sure. And again, yeah. you know, Wesley's not scoring. Douglas Louise, I mean, 
they, they haven't got anyone a natural, you know, real number nine who's scoring at the moment. So without those goals, you know, you can see Villa staying in and around that bottom three. Yeah, I think they're in serious trouble. Another team who were terrible on the weekend was Bournemouth. You know, can they rebound against Arsenal? Uh, it depends because I mean, I, I like you said earlier. I thought Arsenal played uh, played quite well. Mm. They defended well, and they were uh, they pr probably were the better side in the second half against Everton. Um, and he's not afraid. He wasn't afraid to sort of change things around or play some young players. Be interesting because it's uh, Arteta's first actual game in charge. Yeah. So be interested to see whether he keeps a similar team or swaps it around a bit. Mm. Um, they just seem to think that they can't play a Bamiyang and Lacazette together, but it just seems pointless having one of them sitting on the bench. I mean, yeah. you know, he's not, he's, Lacazette has hardly played recently, you know, and, he's, and he scores goals, so it makes you wonder if Arteta can see if he can, he can get those two playing together. But um, I think Arsenal could bounce. I think Arsenal could get a result there. Bournemouth just just seem to be finding it very hard. They had a good win at Chelsea, but but uh, other than that, they've really not played well recently. So uh, I can see either a draw or maybe an away win there. Yeah, I like Arsenal. As you say, Bournemouth lost six of the last seven. Yeah, they, got, they did get a great result against Chelsea, but, you know, one result, Stephen, seven, is not good enough for me at no. home. I think they'll be under pressure. And I fancy Arsenal. Now, well, Chelsea anyhow, are at home no. to Southampton. Surely after yesterday's performance, they've got to be too good. You would think so, um, although Southampton obviously had, had, had a very good performance themselves. Chelsea seems to have struggled at home. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, you know, whether they just find it harder to break teams down who are sitting deep, whereas away from home, teams obviously feel obliged to attack and Chelsea are catching them on the break. Yeah. Um, you'd think after that performance, if they play like that, they will win. And I, I, I do expect them to win. I think they'll be buoyed by that. They've given them a little cushion over fifth place. Um, I think Chelsea will win that, but I think it'll be uh, closer than, than, it, than it might 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 be otherwise. Yeah, just watching uh, the highlights of Southampton, they're now playing with two strikers. I know they were poor against West Ham, but uh, I like that idea. Two strikers down the middle, commit the centre halves. I think you'll play the wing backs, but I agree. You know, Chelsea should be the confidence can't be any higher, and I think they'll yeah. win easy. Well, I think as well they've got uh, Rudiger back. I think yes. sort of steadies the defence a bit more as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think Chelsea should win that. Yeah. London Derby, Crystal Palace versus West Ham. I was really impressed with West Ham when they beat Southampton a couple of weeks ago. Playing Michael Antonio up front. You know, they upset yeah. Southampton, and I think they can do the same at Crystal Palace. Yes, I mean, Palace um, you know, were, were lucky to get a point against Brighton last week. Yeah. You know, they got a good Zaha goal, but really Bright should have been clear. Uh, I think you're right. Pat, West Ham are one of these teams often seem to be a little better away from home. Um, and that was, you know, they won at, you know, you think in the last two away games, they won at Chelsea and won at Southampton. Yes. Um, having lost three at home. I, 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 I sort of fancy that West Ham will either get a point or, or win there. Yeah, and also Crystal Palace, the three centre-halves, you know, Cahill's out, I think Scott Dan's out, Sacco, I think, returns. And up against those two big boys up front, Haller and Michael, Michael Antonio, I think uh, I think there's goals in that particular game, Steve. But as well, I, I think the problem for Palace as well is they don't score many. Zaha, yeah. you know, if, if, they're, if they're able to shackle Zaha a bit, Benteke isn't scoring goals. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's their problem. They don't have a a, a goal scoring number nine. You know, they're relying on uh, Zaha and midfield players to, to pitch up and score. So I think if they if they can stop uh, Zaha. You know, which is not easier said than done, but if they can, yeah. I think that uh, they could get a result there. That's true. Uh, Burnley upset the apple cart on Saturday by winning at Bournemouth. Can they beat Everton at Goodison? Uh, well, last year was interesting. Uh, Burnley, it was like but Everton won 5 1 at Burnley. Yeah. And, it, and it, uh, after that, Burnley turned their season round. Uh, it, I, it, if you'd said to me last week, after the way Everton played at United and against Arsenal, uh, I would have, I would have fancied Everton, but I thought they were very lacklustre. Yes, um, just, they were off the pace against Arsenal. I think that'd be a, a, a tight game. Burnley, as we know, just throw everything at you know. And when they've got their, you know, Chris Wood and they've got their big forwards, I think that's going. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, they, they get a draw out of that. Yeah, I think it's got one all written all over it. Now Sheffield United, who have another brilliant away result by winning at Brighton, they host Watford. I think Watford can get something out of it. You know, against Liverpool, they've played really well. Against yeah. United, yeah, they look well organised. You know, and slowly but surely, I think they they're going to get out of the relegation battle. How do you see it? 
Well, I, I mean, they are. They could do. I certainly think that they will finish above Norwich. Um, but Sheffield United just keep surprising yeah. everybody. I mean, they, you know, they won again at the weekend, and you just, uh, you know, they were superb previously at home against Burnley. I, 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 I fancy that that will be a close game, but it wouldn't surprise me if Sheffield United just, you know, p- pinch a goal and win that one. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, I think Watford will be will be pleased to get a point there. Yeah, I just think. You know, Steve, sometimes when it's going against you, going against you, and then you get a little bit of luck, which they got with a De Gea yeah. own goal and the penalty. Sometimes that can spark a return to form. And I don't know, I just got a funny feeling that uh, they're going to get something out of there. Now, Man United at home against Newcastle, after the debacle yesterday, surely United have got a rebound. Well, you would think so. I mean, uh, I watched, uh, as you probably did, when they lost at Newcastle, and it was a yeah. poor performance there. Newcastle don't travel particularly well. I mean, they've started winning their home games. I think United will bounce back, and I think that I think they should win that. But they can just have to up their game a little bit. Yeah. You know, you know they had played quite well in recent matches, and um, I think Daniel James seems to have gone off the boil a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that he's going to. He, he looks like he should be a regular starter. You know, just you know, he's just something not quite not quite there. You know, he was on it the first few games of the season, scoring goals, but. To me, he seems to have lost his way a little bit. Um, I think if Paul Pogba's fit, he's got to be back in, in the middle now. Yeah, he'll play. And I think that. if he can start you know, driving forward and get things going, I think United should win that. But I think it'll be a close game. Yeah, I just think, you know, lack of creativity in the midfield. It's one thing having the ball. And when you play the good teams, the good teams let you play because they attack you. But the, the lesser teams park the bus. And I don't think United have got anybody in the midfield that can really pick a pass other than well, Pogba. I think yesterday was, was, was a case in point. As soon as Watford went 2-0 up, they sat deep. Yeah. And, you know, every time you looked at it, there would be like a, three or four red shirts with about eight, eight yellow shirts in front of them. Yeah. And uh, they did struggle, to, as you say, to, to find that. You know, they kept spraying it wide. And, uh, you know, Watford were quite happy with that ball coming into the box. They had a big centre-half. So, um, you know, I think it might suit United, obviously. Uh, I think the key is they get an early goal and sort of yes. it seems to open up a bit. But... Um, so I think it'll be a close game, but I, I think they'll be too strong for Newcastle. Well, let's hope so. The big game of the weekend is at Leicester City at home to Liverpool. Can Leicester upset them? They can, although I just have a feeling Liverpool are going to come back. Um, I know they've been abroad, but I think they're going to come back on a high. I think they'll win that, and I think that will just look as if they're just going to uh, romp, romp the league. I thought... I thought Leicester played well in patches that uh, scored a, a, a breakaway goal, but I thought, you know, at the end of the day on, on Saturday evening, City were by far the better team yeah. and could have won by more. So I just think if Liverpool go for it, I think they'll win that. You know, but it, it's going to be a it's going to be it's a big game. You know, I mean, it's an opportunity for Leicester. And I think if Leicester do lose that, it opens the door for City to catch them. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, and it's certainly, without doubt, the game of the weekend. Yeah, you're right. Now, Man City were really impressive when they outclassed Leicester on uh, Saturday. Can they do the same to Wolves? I have a feeling that they uh, they will. I think they they feel that they owe they owe Wolves something. I mean, obviously, Wolves uh, surprised everybody when they went there and won two nil. I'm going to be a big game. Wolves are going to be up for it. You know, I just think if City play as they can, and especially if they play as they did, you know, against uh, Arsenal last time out away, I think I think it'll be an exciting game. But I think City would be too strong. Yeah, I agree. Steve, on to the Championship. The first game up, we've got Barnsley at home against West Brom. Now, West Brom uh, cost me money. I thought they would beat Brentford. Apparently, it was a close game. You see them beating yeah. Barnsley. They should do. I mean, they should do. Although Barnsley have shown a little bit of form recently. They yeah. won their last two. They got uh, a good away win at Millwall. Um, you know, a lot of people pundits. Millwall unbeaten in seven. Um, Barnsley hadn't won away from home. So uh, that was a good result for them. And they'd won 5-2 against QPR the week before. So yeah. I think there'd be goals. When they played um, a few weeks ago at West Brom, they were winning 2-0. Yes. And we're lucky not to win that. I think there's going to be a, I think there'll be goals. Uh, to be no West Brom score goals, I think that'd be a, a, a close, closer game than than the the, the, the league table shows. Um, I think West Brom probably could edge that, but I think they could be sort of four or five goals in it. Okay, Blackburn, who played tonight, seeing me doing the show on Monday, they got Wigan at home tonight. On Thursday, they host a disappointing Birmingham City, who have only won one of the last nine. Blackburn again at home, Steve. I think so. They're on a tremendous run. Um, 
uh, five wins and a draw in the last six. I, I, I fancy them to, to win that. So, yeah, definitely. OK, now Brentford, who seem to be the form team of the league at the moment, they host Swansea City. Brentford too good? I, I think they will be, although Swansea, as we know, are better away from home. They yeah. had a win uh, at Luton. I mean, they lost one away from home all season. I, I think Brentford will, but it's going to be a close game. OK, now... Cardiff City, who were, by all reports, lucky to hold my Preston boys at home. Can they get back to yep. winning ways against Millwall? Um, they should do, although, again, you know, Millwall have made themselves very hard to beat. Won two big away games recently. Yeah. I think they'll be pretty disappointed after losing to Barnsley. I wouldn't be surprised if Millwall go there and hold them. OK. Charlton Athletic, who are unbeaten, oh, sorry, they haven't won in 10, but they should have beat Hull City a 95th minute equaliser. You think they can change their fortunes at home against Bristol City? Well, Bristol City are one of these teams. Uh, you know, their team put a little run together. They hardly lost any games. Came to Fulham, beat us maybe against the run of play, and have now lost their last three, having lost uh, sort of two at home. I, I, I think Charlton can. I mean, they showed a lot of fight at uh, QPR the other day and got yeah. a ninety-fifth. Uh, it goes around. They conceded in the ninety-fifth minute to Hull. Uh, to draw, and they scored in the 95th minute at QPR to get a point. I think they, they could do. I think there'll be a close game, but I think Charlton could win that. OK. One team that is really in form, especially at home, is Hull City. They host a team that I thought would have a great chance of getting promoted, Notts Forest. Can Hull continue their home form? I think they can. They won the last three at home. Forest, uh, you know, were, were, were right up, sort of pushing in third place. Yeah. In the last five games, they've got uh, two draws, three defeats. Very disappointing. Uh, they've got a game in hand, but they find themselves sort of way off the pace at the moment. I think you know, Hull, Hull could win that one, and I think that uh, you know if Jared Bowen scores again, the, the Premier clubs are circling. OK. Now, your boys, Fulham, had a great result beating Leeds at home. Surely they've got to beat Luton Town? Well, I think, again, you, you would expect them to. We, we, we beat Luton earlier in the season. It was one of those games. We completely outplayed them. And somehow, we only won 3-2. They got a, a last-minute goal, Luton. But at 3-1, we were comfortable. I, I, I'd, I would be disappointed if we didn't get a result there. I think after beating Leeds, you know, if we, don't, if we come unstuck at Luton, then it's all, all that good work things have been undone. So um, we, we've, got, we've got a couple of players. We had Harrison Reed and Bobby Reed uh, back from injury, and it made a, made a difference on Saturday. And... Uh, both of them should start. Josh Onoma, who had started slowly for us, uh, probably had his by far his best game and scored the winner. So I think we're just starting to show we showed a, a, a lot more um, aggression and a bit more fight on Saturday. And I think we've got to take that. And with the quality we've got up front, I'd be very disappointed if we didn't get all three points. Yeah, it's true. I agree with you. Now Middlesbrough have won their last three home games. I watched them beat Stoke on Friday, playing a Huddersfield team who seemed to have gone off the boil. Another win for Jonathan Woodgate's team? I think it could be. I, I watched the second half of that game and I thought they played very well. Yeah. Um, but they, they deserve to win. Um, you know, got, got some young players in the team, uh, got, got, got a few injuries, a couple of key players out. Um, Huddersfield have gone off the ball. Danny Cowley, um, they started off really well, but in the last few games that they have, although they came back with a good win against Forest. I wouldn't be surprised if, if that that ends a draw. I think, uh, I think that Huddersfield had a good result and played very well evidently against Forest on Saturday. OK. See, the next game we've got is uh, Stoke City against Sheffield Wednesday. I was disappointed in Stoke watching them against Middlesbrough. A lot of, like, tick attack of football. Getting to the last third, coming back, keeping the ball, but they weren't really creative. Now, Sheffield Wednesday, by all reports, were fortunate to win with a dubious penalty, but they're unbeaten in six. Sheffield wins, they get another result? I think they will. You think last time out away from home, they won 4-0 at uh, the city ground of yeah. Forest, which was uh, a huge result. Stoke, you sort of look at their team and you think they've got a lot of big-name players who've been in the Premier League. But there's, um, and they had a little bit of a bounce when Michael O'Neill went there, but they've lost four and drawn one of their last six. I think Sheffield Wednesday will go there and win. OK. Now, Wigan, who play tonight at uh, Blackburn Rovers, they host a Derby County side who have lost their last six away from home. Wigan are in trouble. Can they get out of it with a good result here? Uh, well, uh, it's normally their home form that, that sort of uh, has managed to keep them up. Um, as you say, Derby have lost six in a row away. By all accounts, I mean, they lost... Scott Malone was sent off in the fourth minute at yeah. Reading. But uh, until they got the second goal, evidently Derby played very well. I... I think Wigan might be too strong, but uh, you know, losing becomes a bad habit for Derby, yeah. and 
you know, they they find themselves much closer to the bottom three than anywhere near the top six. Um, I think I would be surprised if Derby maybe get their first points on the road, but I think it's going to be a tight game. Okay, now Leeds United, who you upset on on the weekend, can my Preston boys go there and get a result? Uh, I'd love them to. I really would. It's, uh, they're going to have to dig deep. Um, you know, I think the one. I guess the, the black cloud for Leeds is that they've lost Pablo Hernandez for a yeah. few weeks with a hamstring, um, and he's you know he's the driving force in midfield. But you know they, they've got quality all over the pitch you know, for the championship, and I think that's going to be. I think if Preston got anything there at all, they'd be doing very well. Yeah, I sadly have to agree with you. And the last game is Reading at home to QPR. Now Reading were fortunate, as you said, you know fourth minute red card when they beat Derby County three 0 at home. Prior to that, their form wasn't too good. And I think QPR can go there and maybe avoid defeat. How do you see that? That's possible. I mean, QPR are a funny side. I mean, they had a good run a little while ago. They, they lost about five in a row. They, they've come back with a, you know, sort of won a couple of weeks ago. Then they lost 5-2 at Barnsley. Come back again against, uh, by all accounts, outplayed Charlton, but, but were held 2-2. They score goals. They're the second highest goal scorers. So I think there will be goals there. So, um, I think it's one of those. I think it'll be a, a, a goal-scoring draw. Goal-scoring draw. Steve, thank you very much for the, your previews on the Premiership and Championship. Now the big one. Who's your best bet and who's your best value bet for Thursday's Boxing Day fixtures? Uh, well, I had a good look at this. I've got a feeling... Um, so I think we got. I think you've got Blackburn Rovers at 11 to 10. Okay. Uh, and I, I fancy them. You know, they've won five of their last six playing very well. If they win tonight, you know, they're right up there. You know, they've got two home games coming up. I, I fancy them, so I think that's a good bet against the Birmingham City side who are struggling. OK, and uh, your value bet? I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday. I mean, I see uh, on, on, the, on your coupon that you've got Stoke at 16 to 10 and Sheffield Wednesday at 19 to 10. Yeah. You know, who are in third place and uh, unbeaten in five. I'm going to go for what Sheffield Wednesday as my value bet. All right. Steve, thanks again for your contribution to the show. Have a good Pleasure. Christmas. And if you see Paul, please don't mention uh, Tottenham. No, I, I try not to. And I'll talk to you uh, in the new year. All the best, Steve. Thanks again. Right. Cheers, Budge. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Uh, soccer six and exotics for Thursday. Our first one is the Premiership. I've banked Arsenal to beat Bournemouth. I've gone the field in the Aston Villa versus Norwich City clash. I've banked Chelsea at home against Southampton. I've sided with West Ham, win or draw at Crystal Palace. I've gone Everton, win and draw at home against Burnley. And I've ended with a field looking for the upset in the Sheffield United-Watford match, 216 rand. A second soccer six. I've gone three bankers and three fields. I think Leeds United will be too good for my Preston team. I bank in Man United to rebound and beat Newcastle. And I think Club Bruges are the top team in Belgium. I think they'll be too good for Zalta Wergem. And I've gone the field in the Standard Liège Ghent. Reading QPR and Leicester City Liverpool fixtures, 162 Rand. On to our soccer 10. I bank at Arsenal to beat Bournemouth. I've gone Aston Villa and Norwich. I've gone the field. I bank at Chelsea to beat Southampton. I've gone West Ham, win or draw at Crystal Palace. I've gone Everton, win and draw at home against Burnley. Sheffield United, like I said in the previous slide, I think I'm looking for the upset and I'm going the field in that particular game. I think Leeds will be too good for Preston. Likewise, Man United, I think they will beat Newcastle. And I've ended up with two aways. I've gone QPR to win or draw at Reading and Liverpool to win or draw at Leicester, 288. On to our soccer 13, I've gone Liverpool, win and draw at Leicester. I bank in Man United to beat Newcastle. Arsenal to beat Bournemouth. Chelsea to beat Southampton. I've gone Norwich City, win and draw at Aston Villa. West Ham, win or draw at Crystal Palace. Everton, win and draw at home against Burnley. Our second page, I have the field in the Sheffield United versus Watford match. I've banked Leeds United to beat Preston, Blackburn to beat Birmingham City, Brentford to beat Swansea City at home, and ended up with Cardiff City to win or draw at home against Millwall, or Hull City to win or draw at home against Notts Forest, 367. On to our budgies bets for Boxing Day. 
I've gone Arsenal to beat Bournemouth and Leicester to beat Liverpool and both teams to score. So all four teams in those games must score. And I've gone Man United to score in both halves against Newcastle, 4,400 to 200. On to our championship quad, I've gone Brentford and Middlesbrough to win. I've gone Fulham and West Brom to win and over two and a half total goals. 18 to 1, 3,600 to 200. My over two and a half goals games, I've gone Aston Villa, Norwich, Leicester, Liverpool, Man United, Newcastle, Tottenham, Brighton, and Wolves, Man City. That worked out at 10 to 1, so 2,000 to 200. Uh, both teams to score sides, I've gone Aston Villa, Norwich, Chelsea, Southampton, Crystal Palace, West Ham, Everton, Burnley, and Leicester, Liverpool. My win and draw fiver for Boxing Day, I've gone Norwich City to avoid defeat at Aston Villa. I think Watford will upset Sheffield United. I don't see West Ham losing at Crystal Palace. I think Charlton Athletic will not get beat at home. And likewise, QPR, I think they will avoid defeat at Reading. And our six or next uh, for the weekend, so for Boxing Day, sorry, I've got Arsenal to beat Bournemouth, Man City to beat Wolves, Man United to beat Newcastle, Tottenham to beat Brighton, Brentford to beat Swansea, and Fulham to beat Luton Town. 14 and a half to one, 2,900 to 200. My best bet for Thursday and Boxing Day is Fulham. After they beat Leeds United at home, it's eight and a half, nine to ten. I think that's a gift. And as far as my value bet, I'm going Charlton. Having watched them be unlucky at home against Hull City, 21 to 10. Charlton to win at home against the Bristol City team who have lost their last three. So that is my play for Thursday, Boxing Day. To all your viewers, have a Merry Christmas and we'll see you next week. Just remember, stay on side.